what we have here at the top is just typing out the letters S, D, D uh, using the Cabell typeface. Uh, in the second version below it, um, I've converted those letter forms to outlines. And again, you do that by selecting type, going to the type um, menu item at the top of your screen. I'm sorry you can't see that in the recording here, but in Illustrator at the top under the type and menu option, you go down and choose create outlines. Uh, when you do that, it changes the letters uh, into shapes that you can see the individual points on them. And of course, this allows you to do a lot more with uh, letter forms as shapes that you otherwise could not do if they remained as a strict type. The thing to remember, and at any time when you want to convert text to outlines is to, before you convert, make sure that you have made your final decisions about the typeface itself that you want to use. Um, the size you can still change, but weight you would not be able to if you, you converted it. So make the decisions about weight and um, honestly kerning and uh, size are, are easier to do while it is still tight, but you can still move those individual shapes once you've converted them. At any rate, for our purpose here, um, I, I've uh, changed them to outlines so that I can do some other things to change the shapes themselves. So in this first version down here, they've again been converted to outlines and modifying the D, the letter D. So over here, instead of it remaining a straight D, it now, um, by selecting and moving the individual points, I have turned it into looking like a face, but it is also a similar contour as that of the letter D. So we can still see the letter D um, for a variety of reasons. Once it's one is that it is similar to the shape of a letter D, but the other reason that we still will see the D of course is in the context that we see that shape. It is next to two other letters that are the same size and the same uh, typeface. And, and so because of that reason, we're already predisposed to see any other shapes as also being letters. So I will typically say things uh, that, uh, a variety of things like that as clues. So the context in this case of the letter S and B are uh, clues to allow us to see the modified shape on the right to also be a letter D. Um, but of course it plays a little bit of a, a game with us because we also can see a face. So in that sense, the B, the D, the letter D can be seen to be two different figures. Um, in that sense, uh, it, it is not a figure ground reversal. It is not a figure becoming ground. It is simply a modified shape that can be seen in two different ways. Uh, it's important that we understand that particular distinction. Now, on the other hand, the letter B, we also, the letter, there's actually no letter drawn there. It is simply the shape of the left-hand side of the D and the two little counters that are placed in there and the proximity of the letter S. So the S is moved over far enough to the right that the right-hand side of the S is placed exactly where the left-hand side of the letter B would normally be. And so again, I, I, I use the phrase while well, it's giving us clues. The right-hand side of the S is giving us clues to perceive the left-hand side of the B, which is implied. Now in this case, because of its, its implied uh, uh, left-hand side of the B, and as, as well as the top and bottom of it, um, we are saying that that is an example of figure becoming ground. Um, the one, mention, one thing I did not mention here yet is that in addition to the position of the letter S, uh, its proximity, its specific location um, is indicating the left side of the B. By the same token, the top of the S, the top of the D, the bottom of the S, the bottom of the D also help us to complete the top of the B 
and the bottom of the B. So again, they become cl uh, visual clues to see something that is otherwise not there. In the bottom example of, the, of these three, we have a modified shared contour between the B and the D. So in this case, the right-hand side of the D remains a D shape, but the left-hand side has been modified. So, in, and, and so this is kind of a similar idea that we did on the top one on the D. So this is not um, a change in figure ground uh, here because this is modified. It is simply a modified shared contour. Uh, it's just another way of, use, of creating a shared contour. Um, it is not a change in figure ground because of that. It is a change in figure ground because this one is either seen as a letter B or it is seen as the ground for seeing the D. It, it, that situation doesn't change because this shape here could also be seen as faces. They are just a modified or slightly different contour. So we can say that that modified contour is similar, but not the same as a letter B. It is also similar uh, to the left-hand side of the D, but it is less similar to the D. So why can we still see the D if it's less similar there? Well, part of it is because we actually have this tiny or smaller D shape as the counter of the D. So this left-hand side is, is exactly the, the, the shape that we would see um, on the left-hand side of the larger black D if it were there. So because we see another version of it, that becomes a visual clue that, we're, again, we're predisposed to see this as, uh, we'll, we'll perceive it as a straight line. It's not a straight line, it's similar to that, but we have this as a visual clue that helps to persuade us to see uh, and make sense of this black shape as a letter D. So proximity, similarity, um, the repetition of this left side, uh, again, help, help us to see that. Uh, and then the, rep then the same thing that we talked about up here is that the implied line of the left side is indicated by the S. The top and bottom of the B are there because of the bottom and top of the S and the D that provide visual clues to read this space as also being a letter. <laughs>